I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, we're gonna go over how to make a repeating floral pattern in Inkscape 1.2. It's very easy to do. We'll make this exact pattern. You can see here is the repeat. If you wanna see even more clearly, here it is. I've made one of the tiles with a black background. So if you have a preference, you can make either one of these. I'll walk you through the steps. We did a very simple version of this in a previous tutorial last year. And the difference is with Inkscape 1.2, it's quicker to set up. So we'll start with document properties. We need to make our page 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. If you have an older version, go to file, document properties. And if you're in the new Inkscape 1.2 up here, this little paper with the wrench, click on that. And the first thing you want to do is change it to pixels. That's important. Then go to 1000, enter by 1000. So you've changed the width and height to 1000 by 1000 and X out of it. This is what we need because there's a special trick to make it so it will repeat very easily. Now you can make your pattern out of anything at all, but if you want to do this floral pattern, I got the source images from rawpixel.com. This is not sponsored, but it's a resource we can all use where it gives us access to public domain images. I typed in floral and quickly I found this pink one I liked. I also found an orange one a yellow orangish rhododendron flower and also this green they have a lot more different options you can use i'm cheating by going with transparent pngs that way i can just pop them onto the square and move them around visually but you can make these patterns using this technique with anything geometric designs text whatever your imagination wants to do but let's go make this floral pattern so i brought them in over here just as regular pngs and the next step we have to do to make it repeat we have to have all the edges line up and the trick is gonna be, we're gonna put one of the flowers in place or any object for that matter. And if it bleeds over the edge, we have to have it also on the other edge perfectly. And the way to set it up is we'll go to, if you're in an old version of Inkscape, go to edit preferences, but the new Inkscape 1.2, go to this screwdriver and wrench, hit that, edit global Inkscape preferences. You'll get a dialog box with a lot of action, but you wanna go over to behavior, steps. You see this right here, arrow keys move by. The normal default is just two pixels. So if you have an object selected and you hit the arrow key once, it'll move over two pixels, very small. We're gonna hack this and make it move over 1000 pixels. Why 1000? Because that's what we set up the document properties to be. X out of that. Now I don't want this here, but to show you what we just set up, if I push the arrow key once, it's gonna move it directly over 1000. Same for up and down. So if I had it down here, you have to have it so the pattern repeats, not just left and right, but also up and down. So if I do Control D to duplicate it, I've got the top one selected. When I push up arrow once, <laughs> there it is, took a second it's gonna go over to the top. We're only gonna make one tile, but if you save it as this one tile, you can then export it and repeat it, or you can repeat it inside of Inkscape in a couple different ways. But let's make the design. I'll pause right here. I have a new camera and it already shut down on me once, so I don't know if you'll actually see the new camera that has my face in a little bit better clarity than the potato webcam I've been using. It's a learning curve, it's all a learning curve. So it seems to be up and running. I'm gonna put the most important feature of my pattern in my opinion, so I'm gonna make it a little bigger. And you can put this anywhere, but I'm gonna choose kind of the lower right-hand quadrant. Then I'll go over to my orange flower and I'll slide it over here. Now, if you're new to Inkscape, there's some built-in tools. When you're on the selector, which is the arrow thing here, over here is hierarchy. I don't want it to go on top of my pink, so I'll go down one step. These little book things go down one and it hides behind it. Next, I think I'll do this reddish one, this bell looking thing, lily or some sort. I'll bring it into place. And same thing here with the hierarchy. I think I'll go up one step. If you want, you can change it so it's not perfectly vertical. Maybe like that right there is good. Control D to duplicate this red lily one. And now that I have it, I can go to my directionals and flip it. Shift and control together will allow me to scale it in proportion. And I'll move this one up here. 
This brings us to the first point where we can see I have an overlap. So I need to do control D to duplicate it, hit the down arrow once to bring it so it's perfectly lined up on the bottom. And here it is. Now for this V green piece of plant, I wanna show you something to be careful of. If I bring it just to the edge here, make it larger, drop this one to the bottom, we know I can do control D and do one arrow key to the right and that will make it perfectly reflected on the other side. Drop down again on the hierarchy. But what happens if I have something across two edges, the side and the bottom? I'll do Control D here. I'm gonna flip this one, turn it a bit. Now when I bring it over, it's crossing two boundaries, the side and the bottom. Control D once, right arrow to have it come over here. Then I have to go back to it and do Control D and have it go up here. If you don't do that, you'll see there'll be a problem with the repeating pattern. Anytime you cross a border, you have to reflect it on the opposite side. Right here is already duplicated, it's selected. I'll push up arrow once, and it's right there. <laughs> it's getting a little bit messy. Let's actually drop this one on the hierarchy to the bottom. I want the greenery to show some more action underneath my focal point flowers. In fact, let's do another one of these pink ones. Change the direction up here. Make this smaller. I actually want the pink to touch the pink, so I think I'll flip it vertical like that. That's what I'm looking for. Shift and control, make it a little bit bigger. But if I leave it there without reflecting it, it's gonna have a problem. Control D, up arrow once. That's good for the setup. I'm gonna center this. We can now finalize the pattern. We'll start by making a perfect square. Looks like I have a stroke on it. Go to object. Fill in stroke, I do not want that stroke. Stroke means the border color. So stroke X out of that. The first square is gonna be my clipping box, which if you follow along, I like to make green, simply because it's a reminder, it's not meant to be an object that sticks around, it's just meant to be used during the clip. But I wanna make sure it's exactly 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels. To do that, if it's selected, if you look up here, you have a width and a height, it's set to millimeters. I'll go to pixels. I'll change it to 1,000 by 1,000. Let's zoom out a second here. So here's our clipping box, here's our background. The white page that you see here is just white because of the default. That doesn't actually have any opacity. If you take this out, it'll be transparent. So if you're gonna use it in an outside setting like Redbubble or something, maybe take it out transparent because you can then put it on any type of product you want and change the background on the fly. But for this exercise, I wanna show you how to make it a set background. First, drag your selector box around everything. I see them all selected, I'll do Control G, which is group. Now I know they're all together, I can slide the clipping box right on top. I want it to be perfectly aligned and there's a way to do that. See this thing right here? This is called the align and distribute menu. With that selected, you'll see a menu box, even on the old versions of Inkscape, the same thing, relative to page. There's a whole bunch of choices. If I select this one, it says center on the vertical axis and the one right below it is center on the horizontal axis. And now I know my clipping box is perfectly aligned. It's already selected. I'll hold shift and select one. <laughs> what just happened there? I'll hold shift. Let's save before we lose this. Save and save often people. Okay, we've got the clipping box selected. Hold shift, choose the group. I can see they're both selected. Object, clip, set. And that is the actual tile of your repeating pattern. If I select it on its own, I can do control D, duplicate it. I'll drag one out to show you that it is transparent, which is fine if you wanna take it out transparent, but let's actually, that's what it looks like white. Let's make this black. Back to the alignment menu, relative to page, vertical, horizontal, drop it to the bottom. That looks pretty cool right there. All right, let's zoom in. I will group it all together. This time it will take the background with it. Control G and we have our black background floral base to the repeating pattern. Let me prove that they actually do repeat. I've got the transparent one selected. I'll do Control D. Remember my arrow key still shifted by a thousand. So if I push down one arrow, there it goes. <laughs> I do actually like these floral patterns. This all came from the idea there's actually Inkscape has these community contests. It was like 
do something about make a leaf leaf pattern or something so i'm not going to enter this one but if you want to enter you can take this design and run with it the possibilities are literally endless i think if i did this one again i wouldn't have the top of this flower hit the bottom of that stem but you get the idea hey before we go it's going to come up in the comments there is a glitch it's across a lot of vector programs illustrator inkscape for some reason here is our repeating pattern if i deselect you can barely see a line maybe you can't see it but if i zoom in now i have a prominent line here as it was explained to me this is an artifact of the actual rendering but it's not actually there so if i zoom even more it goes away for a second but then it comes back it is there so people go crazy and there are workarounds like logos by nick has a great repeating pattern tutorial and he has a workaround martin owens one of the inkscape developers has a workaround but i want to tell you guys I've taken patterns like this outside of Inkscape and put it in the real world. That line is not there in the real world. So if it drives you crazy in a digital format like this, do one of the workarounds. Ask me in the comments what your application is. Maybe we can address it directly on the channel. So that will do it for today. Look at our beautiful repeating pattern, this floral paradise here. I appreciate everybody. We hit 10,000 subscribers. I thank you so much. This has been super fun to do each of these tutorials. I'm trying to take a lot of suggestions from the comments about other directions we can go. So if there's something you want to see, let me know and we'll see you next time.